Standing, wow. Standing, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. like an addition. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, no pressure. Where are you from? I'm from France, Paris. What was your first break? My first break? Um, I was 20. It was a film called Chacun sa nuit, directed by Jean-Marc Barr. Yeah, maybe 19. <laughs> what else have you been in? Uh, what else have I been in? Another film by Jean-Marc Barr that was called American Translation, uh, that was kind of dogma style. Uh, shot with no money, uh, no artificial lights, no nothing, you know. Um, a TV show called American Horror Story that I did here three years ago. A film called uh, The Wedding Song, directed by Karine Albu, that was a beautiful love story between a Jewish Tunisian girl that I was playing, weirdly enough, and a Muslim Tunisian girl in World War II. Um, <laughs> um, How do you feel about this career? It's so changing, you know, it's so changing. I hope it changes even more. It's, uh, I feel great, you know, you get so lucky, you <laughs> get to see so many different stories, lives, uh, people, places, you know, just came back from six months in Toronto. I didn't expect that, you know, and loved it. How did you decide to become an actor? I never decided to be an actor. I didn't, didn't want to be an actor. <laughs> but it was a stupid job. <laughs> uh, but my mom was a casting director, so I kind of like always goofed around and you know, liked it. <laughs> How would you describe your specialty or type? My what? Specialty or type? My type. I, I can't describe my type. I don't <laughs> <laughs> who is your favorite actor who you look up to? Denis Lavant, a French actor, um, in Carex movies. Um, yeah, I really pff, would love to work with him, for example. What would your ideal job be? <laughs> ideal job, uh, ideal job? <sighs> ideal job, um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much doing it right now, uh, but I, I mean, I don't know, like, I was deciding that next, in three weeks I'm going to be uh, in Paris and I have a month off and I was thinking of going to a restaurant and learning how to cook Ethiopian food, so, you yeah. um. <laughs> Do you consider yourself to be lucky? Yeah, very lucky. What advantages do you have? Well, uh, what advantages do I have? Uh, I guess I'm um, born in the right place, you know, compared to other places. Um, that's one big luck, you know. Uh, uh, good tools to get in life, you know. Would you rather have a car or a diploma? A diploma. What do you think about the amount of stuff people buy? Uh, I don't know. Uh, until like two years ago when I arrived in American uh, supermarkets, I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I have, I, but it's not people. I don't want to say that people buy, even myself, you know, the things I buy. I'm like, shit, what, you know, I'm trying to always be measured in what you, what you buy, what's, it's hard to do to control, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't people buy too much for sure. How do you feel about globalization? Uh, it can have some good things uh, in the way that you know we can. It makes us communicate easily. It makes us uh, makes us uh, be able to have you know local food from southern Africa and you know and, and kind of help local small markets but but it also makes what we have now which is you know in, uh, we have coffee places in in Paris and Montmartre that is a Starbucks now you know it's, it's like oh everywhere looks the same now you know 
But um, I, I don't know. I think if we're smart enough, it can be it can be it can be turned in a way that's better. <laughs> Would you rather live the American way or be a socialist? French. <laughs> <laughs> What does the future but all the like? Americans are starting to really be open-minded, I feel, too, so it's, it's, it's a hard, it's a, it's a Cold War kind of question. <laughs> uh, what does the future look like to you? I think it, uh, it's going to be a lot of work. I, I used to not think about the future. I thought I was going to die at, you know, 26, like everyone, and, uh, and, uh, and now I'm like, okay, we're here. What are we gonna do? It's gonna take a lot of work to actually do the future we wanna we wanna build. There's this HSBC ad that campaign that you've seen in the future, and every time I see this ad, every time you step out of a plane, you see this ad, and I'm like, I wanna tell them something about my idea of the future that is not there, you know? But um, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. My 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 future is gonna take a lot of work. That's all I mean. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about having children? Um, well, uh, I don't know if I'll have some, but I'm sure I'll take care of a few of them that others have somehow, adoption or whatever, school or something. Yeah. I think it's great that people do it. I'm not sure I'll be able to do it because of my doubts about the future, <laughs> but I'll certainly help with people's kids. You got kids, right? <laughs> what conflicts or challenges is the world facing today? What conflicts and challenges is the world facing today? Uh, it's a long question. Um, what conflicts and challenges is the world facing today? I think... Um, I think it's uh, it's yeah it's the fight we're, we do every day you know it's like little I don't know little changes that we need to that basically it's miscommunication and people that pretend that they don't understand other people and have too much yeah we say you know like horse horses you know they don't want to see beyond their thing you know but uh, but you know the more we do our job and the more we we open up and try to open up and force them to see, you know, mm -hmm. the more we can maybe do a little difference. Uh, what do you think about the creative scene in Los Angeles? But coming from Paris, it's really enthusiastic, you know, for, for me to, to be around here because everything seems happens like that. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, emotion going on, you know. Uh, which I really don't have in Paris. In Paris, everything is complicated. Everything is everything is, takes thousands and thousands of paperwork to be done, you know. And here it's like bam, 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 which is so freeing, you know. What's your favorite way to communicate? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, mime. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your favorite book, film, and music right now? Book, film, and music, favorites. That's one word uh, that I'm like, ugh, favorite? Right now makes it easier. Uh, favorite book, I read a book called Everyday uh, Revolution by Kara Lumen that I really, really liked uh, about a squat in New York, and I thought it was really, really good. Um, I'm reading another book called Tripping with Allah that is very funny uh, on Ayahuasca and Islam surprisingly. Uh, music, I'm listening a lot to the Heliocentrics right now, and Nina Kravitz, I have a big crush on Nina Kravitz, um, and film, film is, you know, huge, but I saw this film called It Follows that I really liked, that I thought was really interesting, and cheap, which is also, you know, a good I love films that don't cost $300 million, <laughs> and uh, that makes me happy. Um, another film I love was uh, A Girl Walks Alone at Night, Home Alone at Night or something. She walks alone, that's one thing I know, but uh, mm -hmm. that was, pff, uh, I don't know. Uh, 
yeah, local solutions for a global disaster. It's uh, Colline Serro. It's one of my favorites too. If I have to have a favorite. <laughs>